Hey guys, this is Elise. Today's topic is where to start when you cannot sleep during COVID-19. This video is for everybody, but especially our frontline workers. I've gotten over 2,000 hits of comments and messages of frontline workers sharing their challenges with sleep, like turning off your brain after work, or the nightmares, or the distractions of being on your phone and gadgets when you're in bed, just to stay up to date on all the possible issues with coronavirus and other things. These are adjustment challenges in a situation where a singular starting event domino affected everyone's world being flipped upside down, which is, in a word, traumatic. The material I'll be sharing is from a training I received a few years ago um, to be a provider for active duty military and veterans. I've been able to use this material in my clinical practice with civilians with severe depression, severe anxiety, and adjustment issues too. So where to start when you can't sleep during COVID-19? The answer is sleep hygiene is where you start. For those of you who have an aesthetic or artistic sense about you, or if you like to play around with the layout of your furniture and house, you'll probably like this. We're talking about sleep hygiene today because this is one of the behavioral rule outs related to medical care while assessing for mental and emotional health disorders. Often, what the VA and affiliated SBHP providers have found is when a few behavioral issues are adjusted and shifted towards better functioning of sleeping and eating right, the severity of other trauma symptoms emerge and overall, the disturbing symptoms decrease. Then the suffering individual can focus on what is truly an issue and move forward with a doable action plan for the areas that they are mentally or emotionally stuck, hung up on, or deeply wounded. Okay, so the basis of sleep hygiene is this. In your mind's eye, look at the layout of your home. What is the function and purpose of each room? Now, zoom into your bedroom. Some people have televisions, gadgets, their dresser, closet, sometimes a laundry basket, their beds, maybe bedside tables in their bedrooms. Still others have more objects like their pet's bed or other pieces of furniture like a desk and chair with the mail from the day on their desk, a lamp, a computer, and decorative pieces or collectibles. Some bedrooms are connected to a personal bathroom. Some healthcare professionals have blackout blinds in their bedrooms to help them fall asleep. Some have windows in their bedrooms, some don't. For the sake of using an example to just run this practical advice video, we're gonna assume that your bedroom has the items that I've mentioned. The core principle of sleep hygiene is to optimize the quality of sleep and rest so that the brain and body can rejuvenate, refresh, and recharge for the next day. In order to do this, two things are key. First, creating simplicity of the environment, and second, establishing consistency of behaviors in that environment. Those two key principles help the body physically understand the bedroom's purpose, and for the body to physically respond to the bedroom with an automatic self-resting or self-dimming mode. In the bedroom, a maximum of two to three tasks are completed during the course of sleep hygiene. Those two to three tasks depend on your age and your relational status. The first task is for everyone, sleep. That's the purpose of your bedroom, to sleep. The second task is for everyone as well, dressing and undressing, at least in theory, unless you like to get dressed in your bathroom. The third task is for spouses and partners, physical intimacy. Anything in your room that does not directly correlate with those three tasks does not belong in a room where sleep hygiene is conducted. So what do you do towards sleep hygiene? First, if you have clutter in your room, it's time to clean your room. Second, if you have electronics in your room, please remove the electronics. I know this one can be really rough and challenging for a lot of us. Sleep hygiene though does mean no computers, no televisions, nothing with blue light in your bedroom. The blue lights and whirring noises inside gadgets do not allow the brain to fully rest well. If you do not own a physical old school alarm clock, 
You can leave your phone there to wake you up, but put a do not disturb setting on it for the single hour or starting at the single hour before bedtime. For healthcare workers on call, of course, yes, please have your paper with you. For those who are major FOMOing or worried about losing the quality of their relationships, place a do not disturb auto text message responder or auto email responder to let your friends and community know, like for example, hey, I'm going to bed now and really need the rest, but when I wake up, I'll see your messages first thing. Love you, we'll be in touch soon, and don't stay up too late playing words with friends. Or you can write a different message personalized and fitting for you and whatever those relationships are. Third, leave your laundry basket with your laundry machine. Objects of purposeful function remain together. The reminder of laundry and chores and to-do lists when you're trying to sleep disturbs the brain and alerts it to stay awake to do more things. Fourth, if you have blackout curtains or curtains in general, for the one hour before bedtime, draw the drapes, curtains, blinds. When you wake in the morning, turn on the electric lights in your bedroom. Open the blinds, curtains, let the light come in. Fifth, when you wake in the morning after you invite light into your bedroom, immediately go and wash your face to alert your skin and body to wake up. Sixth, remove your books, magazines, and literal to-do lists from beside your bedside table um, or on your bedside table or wherever you have them. I understand this won't really work for every person. If you have a declining memory and you need your to-do list by your bedside table, please do keep that for your physical safety and functioning. However, for most people, please do not keep your brain alert with these social and cultural reminders when you're going to bed. Keep literature in the living room or the den slash home office and keep any games in the living room or playroom as well. And the next one is connected to it, so seventh. Of course, if you have a pet who sleeps in your room, enforce bedtime with them as well. They may have a comforting toy to sleep, but no play toys or treats in their beds either. Lastly, no caffeine or other energy upping mood altering chemicals or substances or foods an hour before going to bed. Your body and brain need the opportunity to physically dim down so they can feel comfortable and smoothly transitioning to a fully restful state of sleep. Additional things to keep in mind in this uh, time of COVID-19 quarantine is that in order to maintain your personal bedtime and personal time with your spouse or partner, you must enforce and maintain bedtime and sleep hygiene with your children as well, if you have children. Set their bedtimes earlier than yours so that you can share private conversation and activity with your spouse or partner. For those who are experiencing waking up in the middle of the night from COVID-19 nightmares or other repeat chronic nightmares, please do keep a sleep journal next to your bed. You can scribble things in it that won't come out of your brain without doing something physical when you're in bed ready to sleep. You can also write down or make illustrative drawings of your dreams when you wake up in the middle of the night. Of course, any scribbles you make in the middle of the night are not for the purpose of being perfectly legible or recognizable. So perfection is not the key here. The purpose of the activity is to physically and mentally place those thoughts and images, especially repeat ones, into another physical location other than your body that is relatively safe, private, and secure. Lastly, I do realize this video of practical tips you can take to generate quality sleep may need to be modified for each individual's ability and each person's family situation at home. It may be that you start with just one modification before you go on to do more steps of sleep hygiene. That's totally okay. Take it at your pace and your family's pace. Do what is best for you, but try to start somewhere. Hope that this video was helpful to give you some practical steps and tools to increase the quality of your rest. In my next videos, I'll share more practical steps and tools to help reframe your mind, adjust and shift a few simple behaviors to emotionally and mentally get through this COVID-19 situation with a little bit more comfort. 
comment, like, subscribe to connect with me here and feel absolutely welcome to share the resources that you really like, research that you found, or topics that you would like to hear me talk more about on COVID-19 mental health chats.